So uh, here you have a configuration example. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, of course, here should be a router. The, because uh, the word router, the name router is uh, default from the pro uh, manufacturer. So uh, here is the router first, and after we write host name R1. Clicking enter, we receive here the new name. So it is going to be used further in our configuration. Uh, first, we start with the enable secret class. Here the password is class. So it means what? When you write R1 at the next time, you see this greater than, and you write enable, clicking enter, it will be prompted for a password into Lesim Tukut Buhon class in order to go to what? To the privilege mode. Next one is line console zero. Come in, we go to the line configuration mode. We write password Cisco, login. We finish with this, so after we want to configure the VTY lines, the five virtual lines, come in, we write password Cisco and login. Taban, on, uh, for our simplicity, we write very simple passwords, but you can write more complicated using uh, letters, digits, uh, punctuation signs. And usually, uh, for one good password is up to 10 characters. Less than it will be uh, easily discovered. Uh, so finally, we have transport input SSH telnet. As I said, if we don't have additional configuration of SSH, this way of remote access will not be used. It will be used Telnet. And the bad uh, or the disadvantage of this mode is that it uh, sends the commands into in plain text. Uh, so after we exit, and finally, we have to write for all, you see, we are in the global configuration mode. So this command will be used for all sub modes that we have here, okay? Plus this one. Uh, finally, we write banner message of the day and you have here this delimiter. Um, you can write uh, warning, unauthorized access is prohibited. You can put some stars here to be more beautiful if you want, whatever. So finally, uh, you have to finish with this uh, um, writing the delimiter to, to close here by the delimiter. Um, unfortunately, there are some small errors during the course somewhere, but uh, I'm going to remind you what is proper. So finally, we write exit. And as I said, we're going to the privilege user mode, R1. After this, we write copy, running config, setup config. So all this information will be saved into the EEPROM of the router. EEPROM is actually a non-volatile RAM, like it's written here, but as a type of uh, uh, memory, it is EEPROM. Okay, so now we are going to configure the interfaces of the route. Uh, I will show you on the packet tracer, uh, and we are we were doing this before. Uh, how to know what the types of uh, interfaces uh, are available in the router, in specific model of the routers. Uh, so, um, if we want to add more interfaces, we have some options like this. Uh, you can see this on the back panel, so we can add more modules for uh, another type of uh, interfaces. So now we start in the global configuration mode. We write interface and we put the type of this interface with its number. For example, if it's, uh, let's say, gigabit interface 00, we're going to write here G0 slash 0. After this, we click enter, and we are going into the interface configuration mode. Here we can put some description. This is not obligatory, this command, but it can remind you, is a Fianna router, 
in uh, our infrastructure, then this description is uh, useful because it will uh, remind you what is the router or interface about any, what does interface connect to. Next is the IP address of the interface. You know that the router is layer three device. So it, the interfaces, adaptive interfaces of the router must be configured with IP addresses. IP protocol is in the layer three of the OSI model. So here what we have, we write IP address and we put here, as you see, IP version four address. We're going to discuss in the next chapter about this and the subnet mask. Uh, why subnet mask also we are going to discuss. Next is IPv6 address. Yani you see the difference in the two? Yani IP with the address is for IP version four addresses, yani 32 bits. IP version six address command is for 128 bits addresses, IP version six. So here you put the address and slash the prefix length that will give uh, how many bits from the most significant bits of the address we uh, give to the network address. Very important command here is no shutdown. No shutdown is the command that will activate on the physical level your interface as if you power it on. Okay, so is a market up no shutdown. I mean, again, she had the avail. We are not going to have connectivity because as if you turn off the power on this interface. There was so the IP address and then home, then home and hot the default gateway to alter the router. Yani, okay. La la la, uh, whole router, uh, default gateways, uh, uh, router mando default gateway. Hey, the binifila and devices must have the default gateway. Now we are going to uh, configure the interfaces on the router, the active interfaces. In can, Michigan uh, interfaces will be active, will be powered on. Not all interfaces will be connecting to some network. For example, hello, uh, we are going to, hello, by the way, if you some uh, pictures, it will be more clear probably. But on the default gateway, LANMO interfaces by themselves, they are default gateways for the end devices. Okay. So this is important. Yani no shutdown, don't forget. Usually at the beginning, uh, the students sometimes forget this command and they have some troubleshooting problems. Okay, so here. Uh, Fianna R1, we want to configure R1. On R1, Fianna two interfaces, Fianna gigabit 000 or giga 001. So, beneath the Heidi devices, the, the beneath the PC1, default gateway is G000. Okay? Uh, it will be, default gateway will be defined here in the PC1. But the definition for the routers is just to provide the IP addresses for this active interface. Uh, so we start with interface gigabit internet, internet 000. I'll fill up to capital G like this. And after if you have some description they use like link to LAN, this is the LAN. After we have IP address 192.168.10.1. You see, dot one is here. Yani. This interface, because it connects, it's connected to this LAN, it is a part of the LAN. So it must have the same network address like what we have here. This network all is with the address 192.168.10.0 slash 24. Uh, LAN 24, Ambiatina, uh, the first 24 bits, in, you know that we here we work in octets and uh, between decimal between point and point, we have here eight bits actually. So eight bits here, eight bits also, and another eight bits down low 24. And hey, the network address 192.168.10 is going to be given to all devices on this LAN, including the here, the interface. And the last octet, Lihu is zero, it is zero when we talk about the network address for all, like a family name, okay? 
and here is, this is a family name, but then see personal name. Um, also, we work with the IP version six. So here we have the network address in IPv6 is 2001 delimiter DB8, delimiter ACAD, delimiter 10, and slash 64. And it is up to here. This is the network address. The other part, zeros, the other 64 bits will be given to each uh, personal device or interface. And in our case here, we have after the four points, as you see here, is one. So IP address 192.168.10.1, and we put the subnet mask. As I said, subnet mask uh, corresponds to the prefix 24. It means that here we have the first three octets. And you know that A to the power two is 256, yes? But because we include a zero, so maximum is 255. And 255, if you convert into binary code, is eight ones in the octet. So we have eight plus eight plus eight, 24 ones for the network address. And uh, this is uh, uh, the, the last one octet is for the host address. Yani, what is the meaning of this? Subnet mask. Kill once, it defines how many bits of the whole address are for the network portion, network part. The other bits that here are in the last quarter, in the last octet, they are for specific user, for specific device. Uh, so next command, IPv6 address, and we have here this one that is given. Of course, not like this. We have one because this is the network address. But when we talk about the specific interface or device, like here, PC1, let's imagine the network, the host part for the address. And for example, PC1, what is uh, his uh, uh, IPv6 address? It is going to be 2001 db8 acad the uh, limiter 10 four points 10 okay why for four points because uh, between this network address which is 64 but can 64 bits for the host part 10 will take what the last uh, few bits and all others will be zero that's why we put all four points for the the whole set of zeros so we finish with the two addressing uh, protocols, and finally we write no shutdown. When you write exit, you are going to see some uh, syslog messages. And hey, the messages they are produced by the operating system of the router, and they remind us what happened in the change in the device. And gigabit Ethernet 000 change state to down after very shortly in few milliseconds and in the 435 but then 447 it changes set state to up what brings this state to up exactly the no shutdown command uh, and finally a line protocol on interface gigabit internet 000 change state to up line protocol is actually the ethernet of layer 2 on this uh, link. In the same way, we are going to define or to configure the G001. But now look, G001 is part of this network, okay, between R1 and R2. In this network, we have only two unique addresses. These addresses are on the interfaces of R1 and R2, which means if we use this network address 209.165.200.224 slash 30, it means that from the whole addressing, which are 32 bits, the 30 bits from the most significant to the 30th will be the network address. Only the last two are given to this uh, interface. 
is the intubed con uh, time with, uh, converting to binary, you're going to see here that we have uh, two to four, like a combination, and the last two bits are zeros. So if you put plus one, it's going to be two to five, and plus uh, to be uh, like zero one, I mean, the last two bits I'm talking, is two to five. One zero is two to six. One one is going to be a broadcast for this internet, uh, this uh, network. Okay, we are going to do a lot of uh, of these configurations. By the way, I provide for you some files that you have to do for training as a homework, but uh, not uh, on the academy site. Rahikun Yani build teams, so you're not going to find difficulties to download and to work and after to upload your solution. Okay. So uh, now we want to provide some verification. The Cisco uh, for the devices, switches and routers, we have a series of commands that start with the show. And they are in the privilege mode, like what we have here, show IP interface breathe for R1 is going to give you all configured interfaces with their IP addresses. And here we have some additional uh, information like about the status, they are up, the protocol is up for the layer two, the status for physical layer is up. So <clears throat> as you see here, this command is for IP version four addresses. If you want to see the uh, version 6 addresses, you have to put IPv6 instead of IP. You know, this is the name of the protocol. So the protocol will print out only the uh, version 6 uh, addresses of these uh, two uh, interfaces. Okay, uh, now in this uh, table, you can see more commands of the series show. Uh, this is what we have discussed before a while. Also, we have show IP route and show IP version 6 route. This is for uh, seeing the routing table this, uh, available in the main memory of the router. Show interfaces is going to display also the active and configured interfaces, but with some more um, uh, information like statistics. Uh, you have to, you can see there the PDUs, the sizes, uh, some uh, additional uh, uh, information about the bandwidth, etc. cetera. Uh, show IP interfaces is also um, another command that can bring uh, information about the statistics for IP version four. Uh, and show IP version six interface is the same. So this is actually for the basic information about the interfaces of the router. And here you can see some uh, example, show IP interfaces brief we said, and also uh, about this, uh, there is no anything we have seen before actually, uh, probably, yes. Show IP route, here you can see the routing table for uh, IP version four addressing uh, on R1. Now, because, as you have, and if you remember the picture, this R1 was connected from one side on gigabit uh, 000 to LAN, which was 192.168.10. And on the other side, it was the small network that was between the two routers, R1 and R2, with this uh, addressing. Uh, this is actually the uh, full class address and this what we have seen there is a subnet which is 209-165-200-224 slash 30. This is actually the address. Details about the routing table. Probably we can, um, you will see that there are some more things that you didn't learn till now, but anyway, I'm going to explain this later on when we have to study the routing table. Now, what you have to know is that C, Maneta, directly connected network. You see, this index stands directly on the same line when you have the IP address of this directly connected network. 
Uh, L is logical for a local connectivity, and this is actually 192.168.10.1 slash 32, which is the interface of G000 on R1. And as you see here, directly connected gigabit Ethernet 000. Next network that is in the routing table command is uh, directly connected, C, the IP address that we have seen in the topology. Uh, command directly connected on gigabit Ethernet 001. This is the logical or local connectivity, which is the other one, and with slash 32. And this is the network address, and this is the first uh, usable address of this network. And as I said, 32 is always for the interfaces that are part of the router. Hey, the um, entries are uh, relatively new. They are uh, they start to use them uh, with operating systems version 15 and later, um, which means that uh, it is easier for the router to recognize if there are some packets coming to the router itself the traffic which concerns dynamic routing protocols, uh, the router will find easily matching uh, on this interface and to put this, whatever is the packet coming internally in the router, which is really very good. Uh, the same thing we can see if we use show IP version six route, but in this case, we are going to see the same information defined into IP version six. Also, we have directly connected network, this is what we have seen there, the local or logical with one for the interfaces, etc. Uh, show interface gigabit 000, this is what we have seen in the table. You see, it is much more information in the output. Like, first of all, Gigabit Internet zero, Ethernet 000 is up, line protocol is up, and the magnetic physical, and after data link layer, the second layer is up. But then we have the type of the hardware, the network card, the address, which is the MAC address here. But then see on the link to LAN, this description was given when we created, um, uh, when you configured this interface. After the IP address is given with the prefix, and now you see we have the MTU, the maximum bytes that can be given into the data payload, the bandwidth, kilobit per second, what delay can be provided, this is microsecond, and many others. Actually, these parameters are used by the dynamic routing protocols like EHGRP specifically to create uh, the best path uh, and to put into the routing table. Okay, we have also full duplex, the speed that is given here, we have type auto and many others that we are going to discuss in further lessons. Command, show IP interface G000, command, it gives us uh, uh, additional information, about some protocols like ICMP, etc., and IP. So if you prefer to know this information, you're going to use show IP interface and you put the specific interface, or you can write show IP interfaces or show IP interface brief. It depends on this what uh, information you want to find out. The same for IP version six. And uh, now we are going to configure the default gateway. As we said, the default gateway is important for the end devices, what you see here. I mean, if uh, PC1 wants to communicate with PC2, it's not a problem because they all are part of the same domain. They are part of the same network, LAN, subnet, okay? Um, it means that uh, the address of PC1 is what? 192.168.10.10. PC2 
command it has the same network address 192.168.10.11. So if they want to communicate, they don't need to know the address of the interface that connects to this LAN. And this is what we call it the default gateway. When this is important, it is important if PC1 wants to communicate with PC3 because the address of PC3 is different. It is 192.168.11.10. So if PC1 wants to communicate with device and device that is not part of the same network and it knows about the IP address of this device, it will provide matching between his own address and the destination address. If they do not match, and this is obvious, on Fianna 11, and here we have 10, they do not match. PC1 takes decision that this device is not in the same LAN, and it needs to send its, its package, package to the uh, interface of the router, which is the default gateway. Taban, uh, we previously defined this manually in our computer, PC1, so it can take it easily to provide a sending the packets to the default gateway. From there, when this packet comes on R1, uh, it will uh, the, uh, in, uh, it will be uh, like remove the layer to MAC addresses of the frame. Will read that the destination IP address is. Uh, this one on PC3, which is 192.168.11.10, will encapsulate with the layer 2 MAC addresses this uh, frame. Of course, here the MAC address, the destination MAC address will be changed. In the first part, the MAC address of destination is the MAC address of the interface here, the network card. And the second one is the MAC address of the network card of PC3. So this is actually the idea, why do we have to use the default gateway? If our end devices want to communicate with uh, remote end devices from another network, for sure they need to know the uh, default gateway. Otherwise, their communication will be limited only among the devices in the local area network. Okay, now we have to say something about the default gateway on a switch. We said that the, the switch is a layer two device. It means that uh, it doesn't work with the IP addresses, okay? Because they are layer three. For this reason, we have to say that uh, in some way, for some reason, we need to provide some uh, IP address, which is called uh, switch virtual interface, and it needs to have a default gateway. Do you know, can you guess why do we have to have the default gateway provided here? Is, do you have any ideas, somebody to say? Well, uh, imagine that you have uh, a lot of switches on different uh, areas, different buildings, and you cannot go, uh, and uh, actually you are outside of the LAN, uh, your device is in another LAN, so we cannot go directly to provide configuration of the switch. What shall you do? You're going to use this default gateway to access the switch and to use the switch uh, virtual interface to provide access to the device. Well, this is about the um, basic configuration uh, of the router and including the, the needs of the default gateway of the switch. I'm going to uh, turn now to the second uh, next uh, actually uh, module. Uh, somebody of uh, the students asked me if uh, you can have the slides. 
I upload them so you can take from the team. But actually, they are not um, full information. Anyway, you have them, but you uh, additionally you have to read also the course from the academy site um, for more details. Now here is uh, uh, this slide, this uh, module, sorry, is going to discuss how we are going to deal with IP version 4 addresses. So here we're going to discuss the structure of the IP address using uh, two different parts for the network and for the host part that we have unicast, broadcast, and multicast addresses. What types of IP version 4 addresses do we have? Segmentation and subnetting. Now, here is an example of IP version 4 address. As I said, it is altogether 32 bits. And these 32 bits are divided into two main parts. Most significant bits, what we have here, are the network portion. And the least significant bits are the host portion. It means that in one local area network, all end devices will have the same network portion in their, their addresses, and they will have unique address in the host portion. As I said, you can imagine this like a family name and personal name. All uh, persons of the same family have the same family name, and each one has its own personal name. Uh, so additionally to this, to be to distinguish how many bits are in the network portion, we have to use the subnet mask. Now here you see in this example that uh, if we have the IP address 192.168.10, we have in binary code these combinations of octets 11601010100 for 168 and Four zeros one zero one zero for the third octet. Um, this here, additionally, will provide the subnet mask. The subnet mask, as I said, corresponds to writing ones of all positions or all bits in the address that are part of the network portion. And here, what we mean, we have three octets in the network portion. The subnet mask will be three times once. And it means three times a group of eight ones. And this is actually a definition of the positions in the address that belong to the network portion. The other part for the host is all zeros in the subnet mask. So how we are going to define if we have a particular IP address, like what we have here, 192.168.10.10, and you have the subnet, subnet mask. You are going to provide between them logic and, which means that all bits that, have, uh, that are ended with ones will be actually copying this network part of the address. And all zeros that are in the subnet mask, when you end them to this host portion, they will give zeros. So finally, you are going to provide the network address using the subnet mask and a particular IP address. And here is the example. I'm sure you are very good in this because, because you have studied before in some uh, other uh, subjects. So here you have the subnet mask. And here we have some uh, address, IP address. Every one of the bits will be uh, ended, logically ended. So if you have one, one, we'll produce one. Here we have zero, one, you have zero, etc. Actually, this part will, when you have ones here, all these positions, the bits will be copied into the network address. 
The subnet mask for the host is all zero. So when you end logically with this uh, part of the host address, we'll give you also zeros. Now, because we talk about uh, um, a subnet mask that uh, provides a prefix of 24 bits for the network part, but sometimes we can have or we require less number of hosts. So in this way, we are going to uh, work in the um, additional, additional uh, taking some bits of the last octet for the network address. Yeah, look what we have here. This one, we have the subnet mask 255 only in the first octet, Maneta. Only the first eight bits are part of the network portion. All the others are uh, host bits that provide different host addresses. The slash here, the prefix is with slash eight. Next one is 255.255.0.0, which means that we have two first two octets that will define the network address. Maneta 8 plus 8, they are all 16. The other 16 bits will be for unique host addresses. Here we have the prefix 16 with the slash. This is what we have uh, discussed before, 24. And now we are going for something different. This group of eight bits for the host will be reduced and we'll use only the last seven bits for the host. And this one, the most significant in the octet, will be part of the network address. So look what we have as a subnet mask. 255.255.255.128. Why 128? Because one and seven zeros bring exactly the decimal 128. And in this way, we write the subnet mask uh, if we have to provide the slash 25. If you have slash 26, it means that 26 ad, uh, bits we take to the network address. And you have 8 plus 8 plus 8, 24 plus 2 from the last octet is 26. One one and six zeros is one nine two. So the subnet mask is, will be written in this way. If you have 27, it means that we have taken three bits of this last eight. So we have 24 plus three, 27. And one one with five zeros will bring us two to four in the last octet of the subnet mask, etc. So finally, here with the 30, prefix 30, we have subnet mask 255, 255, 255, 252. The whole series of these 30 bits is the network address. And what we have here, the last two bits are for the host. Actually, it's less than the neck under consideration that two zeros will give us the network address. What do we have here? Uh, zero one and one zero are only the useful host addresses in this network because one one will bring us all ones and this is going to be a broadcast address. So now uh, we can say that for each network we have three types of IP addresses. We have the network address. The daemon, uh, the last bits according to the host portion are zeros. If you have the host addresses, that instead of the zero, we have some other numbers like what you see here. If you have the prefix 24, Maneta, only the last octet is given to the host. So uh, in this class octet, we have eight bits. It means that two to the power eight is 256. Uh, which means all together as a number, but uh, to provide addressing. The first one is with the zero, and the last one is 255, which is broadcast address for this LAN. Okay, so here you have the subnet mask is for slash 24, 255, 255, 255.0 in this way, the network portion, the host portion, 
for uh, network address 192.168.10.0, we can express this uh, into three octets. Of course, because this is a network address, the last for the host is zero. Uh, the first address of this network is what? 192.168.10.1, uh, which means that here in the host portion, we have eight bits, but the last is one. The last address in this uh, network is 254 for the host, which means that here in the host portion, Tiana, 111111 and zero. If you add one, like 255, you are going to reach the broadcast address of this network. What is the meaning of broadcast? It means that every time a protocol, let's say ARP or any other protocol that uses broadcast messaging, will use this address to spread the message among all end devices of the LAN. And now, I will distinguish between unicast, broadcast, and multicast addresses. Unicast, you know, uh, we have only one address for destination and usually one address of the source. Let's say if PC here with the IP address 172.16.4.1 wants to send uh, some message to the printer, which is on the same LAN, 172.16.4.253. This is actually a unicast message because this message will not be sent to any other device, but only this with the corresponding IP address. Um, the broadcast, as we said, the source is a unique IP address. The destination is all ones, like what you see here, it means that this message will be sent to all active devices on this LAN. And the multicast is actually something between, in the, uh, between unicast and broadcast. It means that the source this is the only the single uh, uh, unique IP address. The destination is usually a group, unicast group, like what you see here. We have uh, these uh, three devices uh, that will receive the message if it's unicast. You see, uh, here is missing the device for the uh, multicast. But because it is also uh, highlighted, we have to express, uh, expo expect that the three devices are taking this uh, message. It means that if you have a device that is in a multicast group, this device will have two addresses. A unique address that is usually for unique messages and multicast address the multicast address daemon device should be 224, uh, which is, will be used if, let's say, we have some device wants to send, or let's say this device wants to send uh, multicast to these two devices. Uh, in which cases, film the summer multicast, uh, like, for example, video on demand, like Netflix or some uh, another application, uh, usually, you require uh, some uh, movie, and uh, this uh, your group that you want to watch this movie or some video, uh, the source will provide this video to these users, and they will be receiving the video using their multicast addresses. According to the IP version 4. We said that we have uh, some um, problem in uh, distributing of these uh, addresses. The problem is that these addresses are limited because they contain only 32 bits altogether. So 2 to the power 32 brings a number of unique IP addresses limited according to the 
devices that we have today, um, including all possible devices like uh, personal computers, desktops, laptops, uh, tablets, uh, um, and any other devices that uh, can be part of our local area network. For this reason, the scientists decided to provide some uh, ranges of this IT version for uh, addresses to be used internally uh, in local area networks, and they call these addresses uh, private. It means that devices that have private address only can communicate with devices that have private address of the same LAN, and these private addresses cannot be used for um, internet mm -hmm. messaging, which means it uh, is a significant uh, idea because we actually can use the same private addresses and ranges of these private addresses internally in any possible LAN. So when we need to go outside the LAN to send some messages for some remote devices outside the LAN, we can use the public addresses that are the other part of the range. Uh, now, according to uh, this one, a requ request for comment 1918, uh, we have some uh, predefined private address range, like we have in, uh, in addresses that have prefix 8, when it's only the first octet is for the LAN. Uh, the range is from 10, 0, 0, 0, up to 10, 255, 255, 255. Now, this is an address, it's not subnet mask, okay? The second range is for 172.16.0.0/12, and here is uh, from .0.0 to 255.255, let's 31.255.255. And the third range is for 192.168 with a slash uh, 16. We can use the private addresses from 192.168.0.0 up to 192.168.255.255. Okay, but only these addresses, as I said, they are for internal use of LANs. We cannot use such addresses to exchange data between remote devices. Why? Because probably uh, we are going to have the same addresses, the private addresses for both devices, so the communication will be unclear. But maybe you ask me, type, okay, here we have three uh, local area networks. This one is network one with this address, 10.0.0.0 slash 8. This one is 172.16.0.0 slash 16. And this one, 192.168.0.0 slash 24. Okay, all devices internally, they can communicate between, no problem. But when they have to send their messages through the internet to remote networks, what shall we do? Here on these routers that we call edge routers, because this router provides a global communication between the internal networks and the internet, there is some technology that we call it network address translation. It means that when a computer wants to send message outside this network, its private address must be translated here in the router to a public address. How is it going to be this? And usually, uh, internet service providers, say Dolly Moasa said, Lina Bihosulel Networking, uh, they give some set of public addresses. Let's say, uh, 10 public addresses. We have to pay for this, of course. Uh, so, our devices internally, when they want to, send messages outside, the router will look up in these 10 public addresses. If there is one of them not occupied for any other message, automatically will translate the private address of the computer to this public address. We put it in some NAT address table in the memory, and we'll forward the message changing the source private address with the public address that router gives to this uh, user. So, hey, the message, Rahusel al uh, destination, 
holding the source public address here. When in return, the reply comes to the router, the router finds that this uh, reply is to the public address which is given to this device. Of course, it will see uh, the information inside the, route, the NAT table and will exchange this public address destination with the private address of the device. So this is a, a very frequently used uh, technology uh, when we have to exchange between private and public addresses. There are some more addresses that uh, we have to discuss and they're provided by the operating system of our end devices. The first one is so-called lookback address. That is usually one to seven dot zero dot zero dot zero slash eight. It uh, covers this range, this network. And usually we use the first one address in the network, but it could be anyone between the range from one to uh, two five five two five five two five four. So if you want to ping the lookback address, like what we have here in in Windows, ping one nine two one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one. You are going to receive uh, ICMP messages uh, of, of reply, echo reply, and they will be like what? To prove the TCP IP protocol is working on our device. It is just for testing of our device and network card. Additionally to this, we have also um, some link local addresses that are generated by the operating system and they are starting with the numbers 169.254. They are actually with the slash 16, which means the range starting with 169.254.0.1 and goes to 169.254.255.254. Uh, in what cases the operating system gives this uh, um, in addresses? Let's say you uh, powered the you power your device and uh, uh, it needs to take some uh, IP address from the HTTP server. DHCP is dynamic host configuration protocol, which means inside this DHCP server, uh, we have a given a range of IP addresses that will be leased in a team walkcut all uh, devices that are part of this local area network. So, uh, in initially, operating system gives one of these numbers, IP addresses to your device. Lanuban also know any number from the HTTP server. Okay? Uh, that's why the operating system prepares the first packets that will be sent from your device using such IP address. But as I said, these IP addresses are not recognized by the operating, uh, sorry, by the a local area network because, as you see, they have a specific uh, octets at the beginning in the network part. Uh, at the beginning of networking and uh, IP addressing, we had a protocol, uh, IP4 protocol, that was classful. And this is in request for command 790 from 1981. Uh, very long ago before you were born. Uh, in that time, uh, the IP addresses of the whole range were divided into five classes. As you see here, they start with the class A, uh, all for uh, slash uh, eight, and the prefix is only A. Maneta, only the first octet will be a network address. The other three octets will be given to the host addresses. If you imagine, they are very huge range uh, networks, I mean uh, 20, uh, 2 to 24, 2 to the power 24 will give very huge number of hosts, which is practically not, um, not available. Uh, class B starts with 128, which means actually uh, a first bit of the most significant octet is 1. And here the prefix is 16. It means that 
the network portion is 128 and 0. All these 16 bits will be given to the network address. This class B lasts into 192.255.0.0. Next is class C. Class C is in this first octet, we have first two bits once. So we have two ones and after six zeros, which is 192. Uh, the class C range ends up with 223.255.255.0. Of course, the prefix is 24. It means that the first three octets are given to the IP, uh, sorry, to the network address. Class D is usually a range from 2 to 4 to 239, uh, which is mainly for the multicast group. Uh, they are used for multicast groups for user applications and also for some uh, uh, protocols. We are going to study this uh, after. And the final class E is continuing from uh, 240 to 255 in the last uh, octet. The numbers that are part of this range are used for some testing uh, processing or for some scientific, scientific or lab uh, uh, measurements. Now, today we barely use these uh, classes and they're specifically used for some uh, processing the routing table uh, and some of uh, the protocols. But uh, today we uh, use more flexible addressing, and we are going to see this in the next slides. Before, just to have an idea how the addresses in IP version 4 are distributed, the whole over the world, uh, we have some uh, institution that we call it Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, YANA. And this authority divides the continent into five big regional internet registries. Like for example, here in uh, Canada and uh, North America, we have one registry, Mexico and South America, another one, Africa, third, Europe and Asia, uh, North Asia, like Russia, uh, is the registry that we are part in it. And also we have here another one that is uh, South uh, Asia plus Australia, New Zealand, etc. So YANA, first of all, uh, distributes the public addresses according to this re, uh, regional registries. From their side, the regional registries distribute some ranges to the local internet service providers. These are uh, companies that uh, take these um, uh, public addresses and they distribute further to the companies and the uh, users. Uh, so, now we have to uh, see how we are going to distribute the IP addresses if we have some uh, uh, topology of end devices. Uh, routers, etc., and how we are going to use our uh, ranges uh, in the IP addresses among the devices. First of all, we have to talk about the broadcast domain. Broadcasts are usually uh, devices that are um, in a local area network if we talk about the layer 3 broadcast because you know that there is also layer two broadcast that is provided by the switch uh, for the MAC addresses. When we talk about the IP addresses, we have to know that the broadcast is inside the local area network. This is the broadcast domain. And you have to know that the routers do not propagate broadcast. Why? Because you know, the nature of the broadcast is that one message will be sent to all active devices in this moment, which means if we have a lot of devices here, actually these broadcast messages will increase a lot, significantly, the traffic. And can you imagine if we have to propagate the broadcast outside the router? It is going to be given to another 
local area networks or another network, as it will be really a vast of broadcast messages, which is uh, not desirable. Actually, these broadcast messages will take a lot of the bandwidth and the user traffic will not be sent properly. We are going to see delays in our user traffic. That's why you have to know that uh, broadcast messages are sent only between the end devices in one broadcast domain. Now, um, as I said, if we have a lot of devices and devices in one local area network, let's say here in this one, we have up to 400 users. If one user sends a broadcast domain, can you imagine we have 400 messages passing for this broadcast. It is very um, over, overwhelming the intermediary devices and also it will reduce the user traffic. It's much better to divide these 400 users into two subnets, what you see here, where each subnet is of 200 users. But in order to be uh, to be uh, pr properly uh, processing these devices in different in these two subnets, we have to provide a specific IP addresses that will not be the same. And here we have 172.16.0.0/16. Now look what we have: 172.16.0.0/24 and 172.16.1.0/24. And of course, between them we have to provide the router. Maybe you'll ask, why do we have to do this? What, why do we have to have here zero, zero, and here one, zero? Because look, uh, the slash 16 means that only the first two octets are for the network. Now, what do we have to do? We have to search in the third octet and here to provide a division. Uh, usually, we take one of the bits in the third octet and we provide this division here the red zero must be here but anyway uh, we know that this is a specific uh, part of the address so the first group or first subnet is zero zero but slash 24 it means that this zero the third octet is part of the network address and here we have 172.16.1 command slash 24 maneta, this is the network address of this subnet. Dividing the whole subnet into two the, uh, subnets, it means that if some of the devices send broadcast, it is not going to be 400 times, it's going to be only 200 times, because it will be only in this local area network. Why do you have questions? Hey, Doctor, بما أنه هون ال router بين أقوى من ال switch. ليش نحن نستعمل switch ما نستعمل router ومطارح? Ah, as the con behind the picture. أصدق هي router بتحفظ ال IP addresses وكذا مفروض يكون أسرع من ال switch أو شيء هيك. No, no, no. Router, نحن عم نشتغل هلا ب IP addresses. IP addresses. يعني معناتها we are going to put here a router. Router هو عم بيعمل division of the uh, local area networks, LAN. يعني كل واحد LAN is connected to one interface of the router. Switches هن layer 2. يعني إذا نحن بدنا نعمل division ومنحط هون switch ما راح يقدر يشتغل لأنه switch ما بيعرف ما بي ما بيعمل ما بيميز بين IP address واحد للتاني ما بيعمل forwarding of the packet. So هون بس نقول نحن بدنا نعمل division in IP addresses for sure هون لازم يكون في router. Okay يعني كده عم نشتغل ب IP addresses في router نشتغل ب MAC addresses في switch. Idea this is the that's the basic thing. But then, but the dynamic division between the devices, and yeah, the end devices like Sartiana Honor, but then also on Miten and Miten, 
it means that we have now two subnets نحن بنسميهم and each subnet لازم يكون فيه unique IP address مجرد في unique IP address and it is connected to the router and this is the default gateway هاي دي كمان هون في عنا unique IP address the other 200 devices and this is the default gateway for this uh, subnet. If uh, devices from this part want to communicate to devices to the other part, of course they have to go through the router. Let's come up with different subnet uh, addresses here. Okay. Behave it, all devices, they have the same uh, address. Yeah. Network address is 172.16. And the prefix is 16. My net, uh, all devices here, and if you have 16 bits, 8 plus 8, 2 to the power 16, it brings a lot of devices. So these devices are part of the same network. But then we call Fianna Home slash 24, my net, uh, hey, the network address is not anymore 172.16, and Home Sharp 16. The IP address is 172.16.0, now we have 24, and this is different. And Taban, the number of the users here is going to be less uh, than this number that we have all together. Okay, like in, uh, you take this idea, we talk about subnets, Maneta kel wahat subnet si specific IP address. And if we want to put or to communicate devices from one subnet to another, by net on lezi ni router. Okay. Hala, the main idea today is to see how to divide the addressing between the different users, different subnets. So what Provide segmenting of the network. And yeah, segmenting my network in one network, we divide it in some parts, what we call it segments, or uh, from yeah, in another way, we say we provide subnets. So, first of all, in this way, we can reduce the traffic, especially for broadcast, over the net, uh, the LAN. Uh, also, we can provide uh, some security policies here, but I have some uh, small idea about this. Or you can say that uh, uh, devices from one uh, uh, segment cannot uh, communicate um, with devices on another segment if we have some policy here for security, for example. Uh, and finally, subnetting reduces the number of devices that will be affected is if you have some uh, broadcast traffic, which is not normal. Let's say if you have some uh, hacker, um, be bad, clear, um, messages broadcast to uh, provide flooding of the device, and finally it cannot work properly. So this is kind of deny of services attack. Uh, so here we have some variety of reasons. For example, we have a huge building here, few floors. We have a common router. Uh, if we want to provide division between the devices on each floor, we have be different segment or different LAN. So the floor, the devices in it will be part of one specific LAN. Like here we have the fifth floor is 10.0.5.0/24. Here we have 10.0.4.0. Zero, etc. Uh, if this device and device of the uh, floor five we want to be, communicate to device of floor four, they should go through what? Through the router and after to send their messages to the subnet or the um, segment. Now, in this way, and here we divide according to the floors. Uh, in this way, we can divide according to the functions. Masalan, uh, let's say some subnet for the professors, see subnet for the administration, see subnet for the students, see wireless, etc. Has admin functions, we can divide our uh, IP addresses into different 
segment. Like what you see here, administration, you see the IP address is 10.0.1.0. Here's young students, 10.0.2.0. Human resources, HR, 10.0.30, accounting, etc. This is division according to the functions, which is usually what we do in practice. And hey, there, it's most usable. And in this one, we have uh, according to the devices. And if you imagine uh, to uh, put all printers in one subnet, all hosts in another, the servers we can put in another subnet, this is what we call server farm, etc. So we can do different combinations, but it is important to uh, know why do we have to do and why is good to provide this division of the LAN into subnets, or what we call it, segmenting. Segment. So, um, <clears throat> according to the uh, octet boundary, we have said that we have prefix of A, 16, and 24 mainly about the classes that we used, A, B, C. And the subnet mask is this in this way, decimal representation is in this way. Is a Fianna B uh, binary uh, according to the positions of the bits for prefix eight, the first eight bits, what we call more significant bits, they are for the network. And the last three octets are for the host, as you see here. The number of the hosts in one network of this is 16,077,214. The prefix of 16, the subnet mask we write 255.255. The network portion is the first two octets, and the host portion is the last two octets. So it's a Tianna Hack network with the prefix 16. The number of the host, 2 to the power 16, is 65,536. But Lanlu, uh, you know that the first address with all zeros or whatever the network address altogether. Or next last address, which is all ones, and in the this is for broadcast. So means six five thousand five hundred thirty-six we take away two. The uh, addresses that could be given to the host is this number six five thousand five hundred thirty-four. slash twenty-four the subnet mask in decimal uh, vision is this. Here we have the first three octets for the network address, and the last octet is for the host. Two to the power eight, because we have here eight positions in the octet, is 256. The first one with zeros is for the network address altogether. And the last one, all ones, yeah, 255, is for the broadcast. So. The useful addresses that we can have in such addressing is 254. Now, uh, if we have to uh, discuss the ranges in the broadcast, we are going to take this. And if you have now, um, the subnet address, uh, like we start with the first 10, um, which means we use this 10.0.0.0 slash 8. You want to subnet it using 16. In a Maneta, instead of one octet, the first one, we are going to use the second one. The second one, how many uh, possible numbers we can have? 255, yes? And we start from the 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., to 255. Maneta, how many subnets we can have all together plus this and this all together, they make 256 possible subnets. How they will be uh, distributed? Yeah, the first one, 10.0.0.0, be bellish because these are the host part, yeah, and if you have 16 bits for the host part, the host addresses will be at 0, 1 up to 255, 254. Not even hot on 255 because it's going to be what? Broadcast address. 
the broadcast is, as you see here, 10.0.255 and 255 is the broadcast. Next one is uh, the same, 10.1.01 and command goes to the same range and also the broadcast is this one and what we can say if you divide this network address into subnets with the slash 16 and the prefix 16 rahikun fianna 256 subnets and these are their numbers also here fianna some missing here in between and uh, this is the broadcast addresses about each of them. Now, if you want to divide it into 24, prefix 24 maneta, what we have, uh, the subnet mask, uh, sorry, the, the, the address of the network, instead of one octet, takes three octets. Okay? So only the last is for the host. What shall we uh, say now? Yani, we start with because the original one was only the first octet network and in what we have here we have the second and third octet that will give us the range of the subnet why the second and third because the last one is defined with the slash 24 for the host and in this way we have from 0, 0.0 to 255255 255. how much is this 16 bits, 2 to the power 16, will bring us 65,536 possible subnets. Of course, here we can see the ranges and the broadcast addresses. <clears throat> now here we can see um, different ways how to provide subnetting. Uh, like, for example, if you have we're going for further subnetting and from 24, we write uh, with 25. In Maneta, initially we had 24 bits for network address. The first, the second, and third of that. But because we want 25 Maneta, we take one bit from the host portion. And it is the next one after the network address. So what do we see on the host portion? It will be only seven bits left Yani, 2 to the power 7, we have all together 126 uh, possible addresses that is in the host portion. How many subnets? Because we use only one bit, we have two subnets. Why? Because this bit can be 0 and can be 1. And maybe you will tell me type 0, can it be 24? Yes. If the Fiano 24, this is going to be in the host, will be done zero. But Nahnahalla, we want to use uh, prefix 25, which means that this part or this bit is going to be zero with slash 25 and one with slash 25. That's why we say two subnets. In yani home behavior position, we could have two options. Yeah, zero, yeah, one. But what makes difference? This slash 25. If the slash 26, uh, we use two bits. You know, 24 from here plus two are 26. And for the host portion, Sartiana bus 50, two to the power six is uh, uh, 64. We move first in the last one, the Sartiana 62 for the host. Now, how much? How many subnets can we do in these two bits? We can do two to the power two, four. Yeah, we can have um, this one plus zero, zero, slash 26, zero, one, one, zero, and one, one. So we can have all together four subnets. 27. We take three more bits. So how many subnets we can have? Two to the power three, eight. And they will start with zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, etc. So we have all together subnets uh, eight for this uh, prefix 27. 
Ei se ole. Hala bin ispele törki, this is a subnet mark, and only the last two bits are for the house, which means only two bits, oh, sorry, only two addresses we can have in this combination. The first address of zeros is for the network altogether. The last one one is for the broadcast. So we have zero one and one zero. We need a subnet that uh, we want to create for slash 16. Starting with the 16, and after we subnet to 17, and we take one bit, and here the 16 is initially for the network, or where for the host. But because we want to provide 17, and we take this first bit, the most significant bit from the host part. So we have here, yeah, zero, yeah, one with the slash 17. So we have two subnets and the number of the holes for these subnets is 32,766. Why? Because we have what? Eight plus seven, 15 bits for the host address. 18 will take two bits from the host part, from the original host part. It means that we have eight plus eight, 16 plus two, 18. For the host, we have how many? They are um, okay. Uh, I was uh, I thought about this. No, anyway, uh, eight plus six are fourteen. Uh, so fourteen minus two to the power fourteen is sixteen thousand three hundred eighty-two. And we work in the same manner to reach to the uh, last one when we have uh, prefix thirty. Come in. The last two bits are only for the host, and they should be only two useful host addresses. Well, let's talk about subnetting in another way. Nahna, um, we want to provide, let's say, 100 subnets, and the slash is 16. What's supposed to be this? Let's say, take this number. Uh, 172.16.0.0. The first two octets is for the slash 16 manetti. This is the original address. Now what we want to do, 100 subnets. To make 100 subnets, and how many bits we have to take from the host part? If we take one bit, can two subnets. If we have two bits, rahikun four subnets. If we have four bits, there will be 16 subnets. So how many we have to take here? We have to take these seven bits in order to provide two to the power seven, 128 subnets. Of course, Mishrah Nehut Kailun, but the Nehut, the first 100, and we'll have some left in this addressing, and the last, the last 28 will, be, will not be used. Okay, so this is the idea how we are going to provide <coughs> uh, subnetting if we have specific number for subnets. How many subnets do we want to provide? I want to tell you that in this way, all subnets have the same number of hosts. Okay, so they, what you call it is, is equal length subnetting. If you want to create 1,000 subnets for uh, a network address 10.0.0.0 with prefix 8, it means that only the first octet, the most significant bits, are for the network address. And how many bits we have to take from the host in order to provide 1,000 subnets? As you see here, we have to take 10 bits to borrow from the host to produce uh, number of subnets uh, equal or greater than the required 1,000. In this case, Yana, 24 extra subnets that will not be used. What is left for the host address is the 8 bits plus 6, 14 bits for the host address in this uh, uh, subnet.
Now, uh, let's go back to the uh, topology that we usually make in our local area networks. Um, let's say we have this uh, local area network. Uh, we have a company uh, for trading. Uh, also, we want to uh, we produce something and we want to sell our uh, items. Uh, what usually we do in this case? Uh, here we have some router, which what we call it edge router. That could be uh, the main point that will connect our local area network to the internet. Here in this uh, network, in this subnet, Jan Nackel uh, and devices for our uh, staff, for the administration, etc. It is possible to put in another subnet our servers usually in this server can information about the items that we produce the prices uh, how many uh, items do we have in this moment etc so usually this we keep in servers that can be reached easily from the users from internet this uh, subnet we call it demilitarized zone usually demilitarized zone because we mean here to put our servers and they must be reached by the users, the animator and if you have a company, let's say Cisco.com, uh, when they write on their browser Cisco.com, they will reach the uh, pages of our company and probably the data that is here in this demilitarized zone. Uh, usually, these devices they have public addresses. Usually, it's easier because through the um, domain name uh, protocol or system, they can be uh, found easily. Uh, from the other side, our devices, what we put inside our network, uh, most of them, they work with some data which is critical, uh, sensitive, uh, it must be secret. We put it in so-called intranet, or actually our network, our network is called intranet. Here we use typically private addresses. So when these devices want to communicate to the net to internet, here we have to put NAT, network address translation. The private addresses will be converted by the router into public addresses, Limo Ujudin Landu, Bill Memory, and they are given by the internet service provider. So this router will forward the messages to the internet to remote uh, users uh, using the uh, translation of the private devices, uh, private addresses into public addresses. So this is actually um, kind of security. I mean, we want to provide security here for our internal uh, network, the internet. We put some security policy here on the router. Maybe we have some firewall here also, uh, and they must be uh, protected for some unauthorized acts from outside. Uh, if we want to put some security here on the demilitarized zone, people have to maselen here for the, uh, on this interface, some uh, control like uh, access control list, or maybe you can put some uh, uh, username and password that can be here uh, configured in the route in the servers for some authorized uh, users and not it's not allowed for example uh, everyone to access this uh, uh, DMZ even if it is public and it is uh, with less security. But say they can know, uh, it's a more uh, specific in the core CCNA security so we're not going to give more time for this uh, configuration. Well, so let's uh, see now how we are going to uh, reduce the subnets that, for example, uh, have less users than the subnet itself. Masalen, Tiandi, uh, Subnets that provide for me 1,024 uh, user addresses, but my uh, subnets I don't have so many devices. I have let's say 
50 other uh, 50 computers why should i have so big range of addresses i cannot reach 1000 so it's the, in this way we can provide subnetting of the subnet and here you can see that if you use the prefix length of slash 25 the host in one subnet will be maximum 126 if you put slash 26 the hosts will be 62. If you put uh, slash 27 prefix, the hosts are 30, etc. So according to this and the subnet mass, we can provide a more closer division uh, to our uh, the number of our devices than if we use the equal size subnets. So now here, what do we have? We have some example about how we're going to use the network address of 172.16 with slash 22. If you look at the address, 172 is this one, 10, 10, 10, 10, 0, 0. 16 is the second octet, three zeros, 10, 10, 0, 0, 0. And the others here, zeros, are represented as A0 in each octet. But because you have the prefix 22, it means that we use the first octet and second, which means 16, and plus six of the third octet, the most significant bits of the third octet. And this is what? 22 bits given to the network portion. 22, how much is left? 10. Can uh, in the least significant eight plus this what are left from this third to Yanimanete Kulu 10. So if we write two to the power 10 minus two all together for each subnet, we have 1022 hosts. I mean, this 10 bits can bring us for this network address 1022 hosts. Of course, we don't want to use all together. We want to divide them. Like, for example, corporate headquarters, branch one, branch two, branch three, branch four. Okay? So we have here how many? Five networks, five local area networks, or five subnets. Okay, this is from internal part or intranet. But because the router wants to connect to the internet or ISP, there must be another here, another network or another addressing. If we didn't address these interfaces, we don't have co connection to the internet. We don't have connection to the ISP. So altogether, what shall we do? Five subnets plus these five, they must be all together 10 different subnet uh, addressed. And here you can see uh, more in details. Uh, so we start from the first position. Then we said 172.16 with slash 22. Uh, it means that this we're not going to use. It will stay because we want to divide into subnets the, the, to work in the host part. Now, in order to provide 10 subnets, how many bits do we need? If we use three bits, two to the power three is eight, which means it's not enough. We have to use four bits. We use the two bits of the third octet and we use the other two bits of the fourth octet. So two to the power four will give us 16 subnets of the same size. And in the same size, Maneta, in each subnet we have how many uh, hosts? Two to the power six. Is what 64 minus 2, 62 uh, unique host addresses, which means uh, in the first one we need 40, Moneta 62 is enough, we have extra unused IP addresses, 25 also is less than 62, 30 addresses also less than 62, 10 less than 62 and 15 also is less than 62. 
So here we can use this first uh, six, or actually there are seven in this way, uh, subnets with what? Well, because we take four bits here, and it, it will not be prefix 22 anymore, it will be 26. Why? Because Nahna Zidna Arba bits are network portion. And initially there were 22, and now we have. 22 plus 4, yani 26. And according to this 26, we have the following uh, subnet addresses. The first one is as the, this one, but the difference is in the prefix, which means these two are different addresses. Never mind that we see them as the same. What is important? How many bits we have in the network address? The next one is 0001, which is what? And you have here in the last, uh, in these are zeros in the third octet, 172160. And here what we have, one, 0, 01 and six zeros, which is what? 64. The third one is 0010. Zero, zero. Come in, the third. Octet is zero. The next one is 128. One, zero, 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 zero. Now the fourth uh, subnet is zero, zero, one, zero. But then you have the zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, etc. If you convert into decimal, you're going to find that we have here, uh, you know, this now uh, is not anymore zero. In this uh, fifth octet, uh, fifth uh, subnet, we have one. Why? Because here one goes into the third octet. Come and hold in, in the third octet, and here also. Of course, we are going to use the first, uh, like, let's say here, for the corporate headquarters, we use 172.16.0.64. This is the second subnet. Uh, the first one is for the um, network that connects the router to the ISP. The third, uh, actually, no, here we have the branch two, is 172.16.164, is this one, which is the seven. Uh, after we have branch three, 172.16.1.192, uh, it's not available here. Is this one? Oh no, it's somewhere here, it's not in the table, etc. Actually, you can choose any subnet you want, but of course it must be documented because not all of them will be used and you have to know for which LAN what subnet is used. Well, do we have any questions about this, guys? Is it clear for you how we divide uh, the addresses into subnets. Maybe nobody follows my my talking. Well, I consider that uh, you don't have questions, so let's go for the last uh, discussion about variable length subnet mask. Uh, till now we are talking that all subnets, they have 62 uh, usable uh, IP addresses for the host. But sometimes you don't need all of them. In this example here, we have uh, building A, building B, C, and D, but each one has, has different number of hosts, 25, 20, 15, and 28. Now, according to the uh, numbers, we have to choose what specific uh, prefix we want to put on the, uh, the whole uh, IP address. And here we have slash 27 is just fine because uh, it will give us five bits, last five bits of 32 for the host portion. And two to the power five is 32 and actually 30 are the useful addresses for the host. 
So here, 30 is more than 25, 20, 28, 15, and yani this will be enough to use this prefix of 27. But if we use the networks here between the routers with the same prefix, as you see, we need only two host addresses for the Sorry, do you have any questions? Any questions? Okay. Uh, so for this reason, we are not going to use for this uh, simple network the whole range of 62 addresses. We can divide in subnets more than uh, this uh, prefix to reach, for example, prefix of 30. And this is what we're going to do. Uh, now, we have uh, um, <clears throat> the, the hosts that are uh, 2 to the power 5 minus 230. And here, what shall we do? We are going to uh, provide the additional subnetting to divide uh, one of the subnets, let's say the first four subnets we'll give to the buildings, and the next subnet that we're going to use, it will be fine to provide three more subnets because we need only six hosts for the three subnets. Okay? Yani here we have 30 hosts for everyone. So the fifth subnet can be divided into another to reach the slash 30. And here is actually the idea of uh, using VLSM. Now, look at this. For In order to reach this uh, uh, division of 30, we are going to use the last one subnet that was of uh, 27. And we divide it, taking uh, all these numbers, which are three more numbers, and we put here into the subnet address. So finally, we have 192.168.20.224, slash 30. 228 is the next one. And 232 is for the network from router 3 to router 4. Okay, so actually we uh, have some uh, um, uh, rules that we follow this uh, IP addressing. Uh, like for example, you have to know what uh, um, subnets do we need, how many uh, devices, if you have to provide some scalable solution to leave some more extra addresses for more devices in future, etc. Plus additionally, you have to have some uh, specific addresses for the servers and peripherals. Like, for example, servers and peripherals usually take some predictable static IP addresses. And we give these addresses uh, manually, we'll configure, and they will not be changed. For the gateway, usually we give the first address of the subnet, etc. Intermediate devices are assigned uh, addresses for the management, for monitoring, and the security. So this is about the uh, what we have uh, uh, for the um, today. Uh, look, guys, I have put in uh, your uh, team three packet tracer exercises. This is for the homework for next time. I want to send me this in your class notebook. Okay? So uh, you download these three exercises. You do them. Everything is written like before we have done, and upload your uh, answers to the uh, names that you have in team. We're not going to do this in the academy, OK? You have three exercises for next time. And they will be also okay. graded. Sonia, do you have any question? Doctor? So on, so on. Doctor? So on. Yes, yes. Uh, what, yeah. what, what, what? Uh, the exam. Uh, the exam. We're going to finish. 
الامتحان المعدل هو 70 يعني اخر شيء ولا اخر يعني تو هلا اذا واحد اخذ شويه تاخذ 70 مش مش كثير لانه بعد في عندنا موديولز بعد ما عملنا امتحانات هون وفي عندنا فاينل اكزام سو دونت وري انا شفت ناس عملوا سبميتنج قبل بوقت في ناس ما بعرف شو صار في عندهم ماني ترايس وهيك يعني بس دونت وري في عندكم ماني اذر جريدز ات ويل بي فاين بس بليز انا بدي هيدول هوم وركس يعني تو تو ميك فور نيكست تايم فور نيكست ماندي بيكوز ذيس از ريلي فيري امبورتنت فور يو هذا بيساعدكم على الشغل وبالامتحانات كمان هلا اليوم لانه ذا تايم از اولموست اوفر I'm not sure if you want uh, to make some exercises on the, uh, the packet tracer or to leave it for next time. I will make demonstration next time. So after we, when you do uh, your exercises, to be more aware of submitting. Okay, Marty J. Rahamel submitting Makun uh, of one topology and of uh, variable length submitting. So hello. في هيدي الاكسرسايز 11.7.5 This is for submitting scenario It is really very useful for you So do it To be aware what, uh, how to work with this uh, uh, It's a very basic uh, information ورح ساعدكم بعدين بال following uh, uh, lessons for the exams for the CCNA 2 and 3 Okay So this is really important Do you have any other questions? Okay, if you don't have questions, thank you for your presence. And next Monday, we'll continue, hopefully. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Okay.